Hello and welcome to another week of uh, our life. <laughs> it's the Unseen Couple, Ali and Paul, and uh, this week we got a match, baby. <laughs> So we we're just going to talk about the, the matching process um, and how we felt really. So yeah, uh, how did you find out you were matched to moi? Um, mine's quite a long and complicated story. Um, so, so I was initially told that I didn't have a match and then out of the blue they, uh, the expert Angela called me and was chatting to me saying, you know, we found your match. And at this point I was thinking, oh, do I really want to do it? And after a long conversation, at the end of the call, Angela said her, his name is Paul. So <laughs> I spent a couple of hours thinking about it and I thought, do you know, I've gone through months and months of the application process. And I know I'm getting cold feet now, but I think if I don't go ahead or give this a chance, it's something I'm really going to regret. So I rang production back and I said, yep, yeah, I'm on board. And then a few days later, I'm at the registry office meeting Cynthia, <laughs> giving my notice to marriage. So I was a little bit different. So like my, my experience was uh, a very, bit of a whirlwind. Very rushed. It was very rushed. <laughs> so I came in so late to the process. I didn't apply until like January, so I had to do Everything like literally the next day, um, all the tests and stuff that you have to do. But and if then, it was later, you you would have been completely run out of time. So, for mm. example, you would have been too late for it all. Exactly. So, I uh, I get a phone call from production one day, and they're like, "Oh, we're going to send a couple of people out to get you used to being on camera." And I was like, "Yep, yeah, cool, cool." Like, didn't really think anything of it. Like, thinking. It might just be for some background shots in the in the show, like oh, this is this is some guy who applied, but wasn't successful. Didn't find a match for him. Whoa. Did you really think? That? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. They're just coming out to, for a little bit more footage or something. And then um, I'm sitting there on my laptop, and uh, Jen Genevieve was uh, on the phone with me on on Skype, and then she just drops the bombshell. You got a match, and I'm like. <laughs> and then she's like, you're getting married in six weeks. And I'm like, double what? No way. Like, I was buzzing. Um, and all I found out was that her name was Ali. So I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the footage of this. Um, like, me getting told. Because it was filmed by a production company. And we didn't have the handy cams at that time. And mm -hmm. I wasn't secretly filming on my iPhone either. Because I didn't really think much of it. But, um, yeah. Like, it was an absolutely mad experience. I was like, Jesus Christ. Like, how has this happened? Like, I have, however, got some footage after um, I got matched. When the uh, camera guys had left. And I was left on my own with Ozzy, like just literally saying everything that's going on in my insert. mind. Oh, I took this time to like process what's like happened. I've been told that I'm getting married in a few weeks' time to a girl called Ali, who I know nothing about. I basically, from the minute I, I uh, jumped on board to say, yep, yeah, I'm going to go ahead, I just wanted the six weeks to disappear. I just wanted to jump to the wedding day. I'm not very patient. And I just wanted to, to meet you straight away. No, I wanted to meet you straight away as well. Um, it's quite, it's quite um, a weird experience because I get you to shut down your social media so that you can't find each other. Um, um, like no one else can find you sort of thing like friends or family when you say their name so like Ali oh, there can't be that many Ali's in the world mm. I didn't even know how to spell Ali's name like I didn't know if you were A-L-I A-L-L-Y A-L-L-I-E they did tell me a few things they said he's definitely not in Worthing where I'm from 
and they said to me he's I think they were telling me perhaps a bit more because they knew I was maybe a little bit um, cautious mm. although once I had decided I wasn't cautious but they said he definitely isn't in Worthing and he's everything you, you wanted plus more so mentally I was ready to meet you I was just so excited to meet you I just wanted it to hurry up yeah, me too. And then uh, my main man, Paul Carrot Brunson, phones me a couple of days after. And he's hey, like, Paul! <laughs> he's like, Paul, in his amazingly like, smooth and suave we, voice. We love Paul Carrot Brunson, Angela and Jen, don't we? Yeah, we love all of them, equally. And we have no favourites in this household. And we're still in contact with all of them, which is so lovely. But yeah, Paul phones me and he's like, your pal, you got a match. I was like, yeah, man, like, really excited. And he was like, let me tell you about Ali. He's like, she's either going to be your best friend and your lover, or just a, you're going to get a best friend out of this. Like, you two are, like, perfect for each other. And, you know, they kept bigging up, like, how good of a match that we were, which kept me, like, really, like, full on motivated motivated and committed to it me too i felt the same um which in future episodes when the big uh, c word comes into it you'll uh, you'll see we're both um kind of holding on to the fact that we've been matched with this perfect person and we've both got like feelings for each other without even knowing who who that person was and we have to say you know almost a year on they really did get it right and I think that they've just done so well at the matchmaking. I really believe that. Yeah, I really believe it too. Like they've done really well. Like obviously, me and Ali, when we got together, which you'll see in like a couple of episodes time. Um, like we had a lot to work through. Like you know, locking down together. Um, you know, constantly being together twenty four seven when you've like only just really kind of introduced yourselves virtually. It was a bit of a risk, but it's one I'm very glad that we took. And I actually found it really easy. Yeah, I yeah. did too. Because like we were we weren't like you know badly matched in the sense of like core values and stuff like that. Like where that like I don't think we've ever had like any major arguments have we? Like No. No. So yeah. So what we're going to do in this episode is we're just going to show you a few early handy cam, diary cam footages that we have um, that we went once we got the camera from production that we filmed and really these camera footage, the, sorry these, um, ca what would you call them? Clips. These, these clips are, are really thoughts and feelings so a lot of the time we're just talking about how we feel but it, it was really good, it was a bit of therapy to get this crazy journey out. Zoom in, zoom out. I'm not technical. <laughs> it's less than three weeks until I get married. Um, I'm totally a mixture of emotions. I mean, one minute I'll be super excited and completely buzzing and just can't wait to meet Paul. And then the next minute, my stomach will be turning a little bit and I'll be feeling really nervous and scared. I still kind of want to jump to the wedding day. But my teeth's like really shiny, it's just shining right off the light. Um, let's move over here maybe. Nope, still. What is going on with my tooth? <laughs> Journey out um, and to express how we were feeling. That's a very good point, I. To all the males that may be watching, I am also a male. <laughs> um, and I was one of those males who would uh, who would never talk about feelings and you know flowers and no I'm only joking feelings like you know how are you feeling how are you feeling today um, you know that's like a question that was asked all the time like how does this feel how does that feel and like by the end of it you're kind of like using this camera as this like piece of free therapy where you're saying mm -hmm. you're venting everything off your chest or you're your hopes and dreams, your fears and your worries. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that this like whole process has done, like that's been really, really good um for me as a I'm like just as a person is the fact that I'm more emotionally available and able to talk to people and let them know that 
you know, I'm I'm upset or how I'm feeling, like, you know, for this at the moment, like being depressed or whatever. I'm not, but you know, if I was, I would talk to someone about it rather than bottle it up. So my number one top tip is um, just like if you are a man or a woman like, and you're emotionally shut off from the rest of your world, family, friends, whatever, get a, get your phone, record yourself, just talk to yourself about how you're feeling. And it's like a first step to like, you know, being able to express how you're feeling to someone else and uh, that someone else might be able to help you. And also it's, it's good to document it because we were going through such a surreal, crazy time. It was good to get out those feelings. I would, I would, I would completely agree. It's like really good. It's really healthy to get things out of your chest, out of your head and into the open so you're not bottling them up. Yeah. And that's it for this episode. Yes. If you uh, could kindly give us a like, subscribe and uh, comment like what you want to know or something in a future video, we'll do like a Q&A like we have done on our Instagram, which is at unseen underscore couple. <laughs> and you know, we're still new to this, so eventually, once we get a bit better at doing this, um, we would like to do vlogs and things like that. You know, it's just something for us to pick up and and run with, really. It's a, kind of like a new hobby. Yeah. Well, and it's, um, it's quite a cool little hobby to have whilst you can't actually do anything. And we're in lockdown, and we're in England, and it's cold. Right, see you on the next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>